leaving New Zealand, like that was a big part of my identity, like being an expat and being able to walk around and you know, you're a little bit special because you're different and you have a, a fun story to tell and to have that all of a sudden totally ripped away and now we're in our hometowns and it's like, you're not special at all. <laughs> it's like, oh, who am I then? This gets kind of weird when you don't film a video in a while. It's like, you get camera shy all over again. Anyways, hello and welcome to this video. My name is Becca. If you're new here, two second recap. We used to live in New Zealand and we left the country like a month or two ago. I don't know what time means anymore. <laughs> but anyway, so we are trying to figure out our lives. <laughs> we're not doing it very well. No, we're doing it fine. Like we're doing okay, but it's just a bit messy and it's a bit tricky. So the last place that I left off, I think was when we took our major flight from New Zealand all the way over to here and it was awful. It was the worst experience of my life. If you know, you know. If you don't know, go watch this video because it is full of horribly funny stuff. So <laughs> when we were still in New Zealand, I was very optimistic on how flying with two kids is going to be like. And so I came up with a bright idea because Billy had an audition down in Houston and that's where my family is. And so I was like, Billy, let's just all fly down there together. Like just take a week and go see everybody. I haven't seen my family in like two years. Let's take advantage of you being down there and let's just all go. So again, still in New Zealand before we did our awful flight, we booked our trips down to Texas. If I had known how terrible that flight had gone, I would never ever in a million years have bought those tickets. So yeah, we flew from New Zealand to Utah. We stayed there for about a week and then we had to turn around and fly back down to Texas. And I was trying to be very optimistic. I was like, it's just a three hour flight. It'll be okay. It's fine. Like we know we have more experience now. It's gonna be great. No, it was basically our New Zealand flight all over again. And it was very traumatic and very awful. So we finally get down to Texas and then we spend like a week and a half there and it was so nice. There's something so blissful about being in your childhood home like with your parents, I don't know. It was actually very relaxing and wonderful. And then also just seeing all of our family, cause we have family both in Houston and down in my hometown. And so it was just so much family. It was just incredibly special to see William with all of his cousins and like aunts and uncles and his grandparents and all of this family that he has never seen before. And it was just so beautiful because we had a lot of really good friends in New Zealand and some of them played really well with William and it was great but there is something so special about like the, the connection and bond that your family can have with your kid. I don't know. So that was, that was actually very sweet and it was a lovely, lovely time. We had so much bluebell ice cream and I just got to go down a lot of like memory lane trips and a lot of nostalgia. So that was all great. However, then we had to fly back. I <laughs> was so desperate not to. I was like trying to come up with all these scenarios in my head where I was like, well, if I divorce Billy, then I can stay with my parents. I won't have to fly back. At this point, me and Billy probably have a bit of PTSD from going through airports with our children. <laughs> and so I was trying every, every scenario in my mind of how not to get back on an airplane. But I didn't want to waste the money. And so I'm like, okay, let's just do it. Let's just do it. It's going to be hell on earth, but we got to get it done. So <laughs> a little bit of story time with this. We got to the airport and an aircraft vehicle, AKA a plane had landed weird and kind of like slid off the runway into the grass. Nobody was hurt. It was all fine. However, it broke the landing gear so they couldn't move it. So immediately when they came off with that announcement, all of the other airlines shut, they canceled all of their flights. They're like, go home. We're not doing this. But our flight was like, oh no, like go ahead and stay, it'll be fine. We'll get things sorted. Like you might have a few hours delay, but we'll get you there. An hour goes by and they're like, okay, we've got the aircraft cleared off. And then another hour goes by and they're like, okay, they're done with the, the cleaning and now they're doing traction testing. Anyways, six hours later, we're all sitting there and they're like, okay, great. The airplane has is here. The runway is completely ready to go. Like we're doing it. So they start boarding us onto the plane, right? We're all excited. This whole group of people has gone through this together. <laughs> and um, yeah, they turn us right back around and hop us off the plane. And they're like, oh yeah, we gotta check with our pilots and see if they have enough hours to fly you down to Utah. And I'm just like, how would you not know this beforehand? <laughs> how did nobody have this thought six hours ago? Whatever. And so yeah, they checked with their pilots and they're like, yeah, we don't have enough hours, sorry guys. 
we're gonna have to move this flight until 11.30 tomorrow morning. And we're just like, I have stayed in this airport for seven hours with a toddler and an infant. <laughs> and I have been there so much. It was awful. It was literally the worst outcome that could have happened from that entire day. So we go stay at his sister's house in Houston. And then the next morning we get dropped off at the airport again. And both of us, like we couldn't leave the car for a few seconds because <laughs> we were so anxious. We finally managed to get through the whole process again, checking our bags, going through security, dealing with the children that we have. Um, and then finally we were able to get onto the plane. So I had gotten like a very, very mild sore throat a few days before, but I had some residual fluid in my middle ear for some reason, it was really strange. And I was like, you know, I wonder if this will be a problem on the plane. <laughs> and I was like, it'll be fine. I'm sure this happens to a lot of people. And so we go up on the plane and you know, all the added pressure gets put into the middle ear that is already full of fluid and it got extremely painful and I was like, oh well. <laughs> and after we landed, we actually had a bit of a family party going on because everybody was excited to see us. There was family that I hadn't seen for two years and I had such like blinding pain going on in my ear that I feel like I didn't even register that that family was there. Like it was so bad. Whatever, I just took some ibuprofen because I'm like, we don't have insurance. I can't deal with this right now. And then I went to bed that night and my eardrum burst. It popped because it was so much pressure. And then of course, again, the first thought that I have is, well, shoot, I don't have insurance. How much is this gonna cost me? Because we'd only been in the country for, you know, a matter of weeks here and we hadn't gotten that much sorted out. And so, yeah, my sister randomly had an otoscope. And so we looked at my good ear and you can see the beautiful tympanic membrane. And then we looked at my other ear and it looked like a black hole. Oh, shoot. Like maybe you should go get checked out. Because at first I was like, I'm not gonna go see a doctor. I'm just gonna let it heal and so on, it's fine because that's the American way. That's the cheap, poor person American way. And then after we looked at that and saw the black hole, I was like, I'm gonna go see a doctor now. <laughs> and so I actually did manage to get into an ENT and he cleared out my ear and looked at it and was like, yeah, you still have a tympanic membrane. It just has like a pinprick hole in it. There was just so much gunk and fluid coming out that what we thought was where the tympanic membrane was, it actually, we weren't looking at it at all. So whatever, I'm incredibly happy that I still have an eardrum and that I can still hear. That was a long tangent. <laughs> but basically we have been mostly completely enjoying our time here. Like again, so much family. And it's also amazing because we've been able to see so many friends that we haven't seen or like even talked to in such a long time. So I feel like a little social butterfly flitting around. <laughs> and it's also been really fun because it was summertime in New Zealand which of course is the best. But then we got here and it's been really snowy and beautiful. And it's really nice to get here on the tail end of winter because snow and cold is fun. It just sucks when it's six months of it. <laughs> so yeah, we're just here for a couple months. We get to enjoy it and we get to wear like cozy sweaters and be all cuddled up and warm. Before we know it, it's gonna be springtime and summertime again. So I'm actually really enjoying the change in weather, I think it's kind of fun. We have definitely been feeling the reverse culture shock, that whole thing. I will have all of my thoughts and like first impressions and everything well laid out in a different video. I'm not gonna go into it here because it's gonna be way too much. But mostly we have just been feeling very unsettled and it's just, you know, we go back and forth probably 16 times in a day. Like, what should we do? Should we go this route, this route? Should we go for this? Should we settle here. It's just insane. Like it is very emotionally and uh, mentally draining and exhausting, but it is where we're at. And I'm, I mean, you have to be fine with it because you can't change your reality that much. But <laughs> the other thing is that it feels like a really weird, like two year time warp thing because everything feels the same, but at the same time, it all feels slightly different. It feels like the twilight zone because for a good example, when we were gone for two years, some of our families and friends have had babies in that time. And so to come back and see this already like one and a half year old giant baby, and it's just like, I haven't even met you before. How are you so old? This is insane. And then another good example is like driving around my hometown, for example, I just said example like six times. <laughs> Driving around my hometown, all these new buildings have popped up, like a ton of them. And it just looks really different in that regard, just driving around. But like sitting in my family's house, it's exactly the same. And all the adults feel exactly the same, like not much has gone on. It's just little things like that, that you get a little bit of a shock because it's the same but different. So now on to the fun question of <laughs> what are our plans? 
<laughs> in case you haven't picked up on it yet, we don't we don't rightly know. So Billy will take auditions for the next few months and we're going to try to hold on until then, which means that we're going to try to keep doing this very like unsettled existence, <laughs> which is really stressful. But at the same time, like we do think it's more worth it to try to do it this way. So logistically, this is the way we have been doing it. We go to either a family's house or like right now we're actually in a friend's basement because they have very generously let us or offered for us to stay here for two weeks. And so, yeah, that's what it is. We bring all of our worldly possessions with us, which is like four suitcases and a handful of bags. And every like one to two weeks, we'll go to someplace new and settle in there and then refigure out how everything works. And then after that week or two is up, we jump over to the next charitable soul. <laughs> see how these auditions are going. And if none of those work out, then we will figure out plan B. But I think the biggest takeaway from this is a lot of times like the whole, oh, I need to figure out life and I need to get settled into a new place. It gets a little bit romanticized. And I think because when we see it in other people's lives, we just see little chunks of it. It's not happening to us. And so it seems like it goes by really fast. When in reality, it takes a very long time to figure out what your life is going to be. For some people, it takes years to get settled and to figure life out. So I'm trying to remind myself of that very often because I get very done with this every once in a while. But the other hard thing is that I have a hard time with like my identity, especially I think like doing YouTube and I don't do Instagram very well, but doing Instagram as well, it's like you have to have this pigeonholed personality and identity, I guess. And for me to be this unsettled and to not have anything, I'm like, well, who am I then? <laughs> and I kind of latch myself onto all of these dream scenarios of what our life could be like in like a year from now, where it's like, oh, if we buy a house and I can fix it up and that can be part of my identity for a little bit. Anyways, what I'm trying to say is, is leaving New Zealand, like that was a big part of my identity, like being an expat and being able to walk around and you know, you're a little bit special cause you're different and you have a, a fun story to tell and to have that all of a sudden totally ripped away and now we're in our hometowns and it's like, you're not special at all. <laughs> it's like, oh, well, who am I then? So I'm gonna be working on that over the next little while too. That's the other fun thing with this whole process is I do need to find out what my real identity is instead of latching onto whatever is happening to me. So anyways, yeah, I guess I'm looking forward to figuring it out. <laughs> and it might be a long time. It might happen within the next month. I don't know. Anyways, thanks for watching this other very weird random video. I think all of our videos are going to be quite weird and sporadic for a while. Not sporadic as in when they get released, sporadic as in today I'm in our friend's basement. Next week I'll probably be in a family member's house <laughs> and I have no idea what like the next week's video is going to bring. So thanks for being here. Thanks for watching and I will see you guys next week. Bye! <laughs>